Um, these are the things that I did to kind of polish it up. So let's start with the mix itself. So the vocals. I got quite a bit of processing here. Um, let's see. What I'll do is I'll bring up the channels. That That's easier to see. So I have, let's see, a low cut. Get rid of that low end. There's quite a lot of P sounds, kind of pa pa popping out, so I had to cut a lot of that out. Uh, a little bit of DSing is quite hard on the threshold, but there's actually quite little going on. Then I used the Vocal Rider. Um, for some reason, Vocal Rider wasn't doing a good job, and then this setting just so somewhat happened to work, so I kept that. Oh yeah, just before that, I'm running uh, C1. And I'm just capturing some of those peaks. What is it at? Minus 29, the threshold. And it's only 1.25 ratio. So it's not doing very much. It's just kind of skimming that top end a little bit. Those top peaks. And that's running into the vocal rider. And then I have my standard VC2A compressor. Compressing quite a lot. I'm using this high pass trigger or detector. To good use so it doesn't sound quite as compressed but at the same time it needed a lot of compression so you can see here 65% that's quite high and then I EQ'd it so let's hear the vocals with and without Ooh, all of the things you make me feel when we touch and our bodies are in motion baby slow down and listen now, I've got more than enough of that love that you're missing. Slow down, pay attention. We've got nothing but time, so baby. So that compressor is running pretty hot. You can see the needle dancing and moving quite fast. It seemed to work in the mix. Um, I'm also running a low cut and a high cut. That's almost just barely there, 25 hertz. And this is this doesn't even have to be on really. <laughs> so we got that, and I also got this NLS channel, like I said, on all the channels. So here I'm driving it a little bit, and I have the Neve or uh, Nevo or slash Neve console. Um, yeah. So that's how that sounds. Um. Then for the kick and the snare, let's get this kick going. The kick I have quite a bit of processing. You can hear it's quite flubby and whatever. Here you can hear fairly heavy compression, quite heavy uh, EQ. I'm also driving this NLS channel quite a bit. Well, not that much, but here this Sheps EQ, I'm driving it quite a lot. See here it's still kind of flubby and boxy. Here it's getting a little bit of distortion and it's doing a lot of scooping here in the EQ. So that's quite a bit, quite a bit more polished sounding. Uh, let's go to the snare. Same kind of thing as the kick. Decent amount of compression, um, very scooped EQ with some distortion to bring it out. Um, Holtec is scooping it quite heavy. Get that scooped sound and then driving it a little bit on the NLS. Let's take a look at the kick and the Holtec here just real quick.
just because the Poltec does a really good job at this here for this low end and that very top end. So like a kick, this is perfect. You scoop and you boost and then you scoop and boost at the high end as well. And you get a nice scoop sound. It's very uh, polished sounding. So now the bass, let's check this guy, this, uh, this guy out. Um, NLS on both of these. I'm also scooping a lot on both of these channels. Both of them are a little bit different though. Uh, the DI, this is where the kick was hitting, so I scooped this stuff out. Top end was a lot of uh, unnecessary stuff, but right in here, that's that presence that I needed to, to get. So it doesn't make a hell of a difference. I'm not driving this NLS at all. <laughs> you can hear some of that background stuff. What is that? Drums. Some of it's scooped out here. Did a little bit of a low cut and boosted right where the right in between where the kick is kind of sitting there. So there's that. Um, let's move on to the guitar. I hope I'm not moving too fast or anything, but I just want to run through all this stuff. It's already almost 15 minutes uh, in the video here. So, guitar. So mostly just an EQ thing. Cutting quite a bit of unnecessary stuff there. Driving quite heavily. Driving on the NLS kind of brought out the awesomeness in the guitar. Um, yeah, then the piano. So this Sheps is doing a lot here. This is actually just a preset I use, wide piano. Really makes a big difference. I liked that setting and then uh, not driving this at all actually. Kind of getting there. It still sounds very like paper fluttery. Um, what else are we gonna do here? Let's go to the overheads, like I said. So a decent amount of compression. It's kind of on that slammed setting. Really just wanted to bring that, the drums kind of in your face. Um, EQ not too crazy, not driving this NLS at all. Let's, uh, let's finish all these drums and we'll hear what it sounds like together. So the toms, eh, toms I think we'll kind of skip, I'll just show one. Because I did the same thing for all. I just kind of tweaked the settings a little bit for each each tom.
So there was a lot of bleed in the, the tom tracks. So I did a gate on all of them. And then I used a V comp, solid EQ. It's a fairly scooped EQ. Like look at plus eight, minus seven, plus five. It's quite heavily scooped and just a little bit of transient, uh, transient master here. So let's put those on. Very, very basic. Um, but it's still kind of scooped and quote unquote polished, but it's, it's very basic. I panned these kind of according to how the uh, the drums were sitting and how the overhead sounded. It sounded like the toms, the small tom was on this side. So I panned it there just to kind of match it. Um, the, what, let's see here, the hats. Did kind of a scoop thing with the EQ. Rolled off some of the lows and did like a, a shelf EQ on this top end here. But more importantly, got rid of all that drum stuff here, really heavy on the low, did a harsh uh, high pass, and did some compression just to try and even out the volume, and a little bit of transient design. And this kind of just gave it a little bit more shimmer. Not driving this NLS at all. And then the uh, the rooms. Let's let's hear what the drums sound without the rooms. So without the rooms, they sound very dry. Not that good. Um, <laughs> well, they're good. They sound a lot more polished now that they're kind of uh, dealt with as far as the mix goes. But very dry. So that natural reverb works really well with it. So I kept kept this uh, as the main kind of drum reverb. Uh, let's see what I did on this channel. Drum room. So a tiny bit of compression and some scooping in the EQ and then that's it and this guy quite a bit of high pass and scooping because you can hear all that low end that's just gonna muddy up the entire mix it's kind of a useless really so scoop that out I'm driving it a little bit Now the mix is starting to sound pretty good. Um, I had already kind of done all this stuff and then balanced all the levels. So as I'm putting all these plugins back on, it's it's going back to the level that I had previously matched already. So it probably sounds better um, than with 
all the plugins off just because they're balanced in uh in level but also because of all the processing too right so now the background vocals kind of basic very similar to the uh lead vocals harsh slow down harsh cut to get rid of that low end rumble stuff and pretty harsh compression oh, baby. Baby, slow down. Slow down. but again i'm using this detector yeah, high pass to make it sound less jumpy and bouncing around kind of compression it it seems to smooth it out because it's not being triggered by the full signal, it's being triggered by the top end of the signal. And then EQing that. And NLS driving it a little bit. So I did that for all three of them. I kept them panned all center. And then in the group, which I, which I sent it to, I uh, use the micro shift to pan them out. So I'll, I'll be showing that after. Um, so right now, everything has all their own dedicated plugin on them. So this is what it sounds like now. So that's pretty good. It still kind of sounds, it's not papery and fluttery like it was before. It sounds a bit better. It's still missing some oomph. Uh, there, there's no sends right now, I don't think. No, there is. Okay, I forgot to take all the sends off. But yeah, so there's, I sent a lot of, uh, did a lot of reverb sends and some doubling sends, some chorus sends, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'll go. I'll run through the the inserts. Um, so on the kick, snare, tom, all of these groups, I have all of these uh, NLS bus. So these ones here are NLS channels, which you put at the end of your inserts on the channels then when you send that to your groups or your buses you put the uh the nls bus on but you put it on the first and that's going to mimic analog summing and then all of these groups get sent to the stereo track the two bus which has also an NLS bus and that's mimicking analog summing for me I kind of like using NLS on uh, rock songs that kind of stuff like band stuff not so much not so much um, electronic music it can work and I I could make it work and work to my taste but I just don't really use it quite as much because I, I like the clarity of just using digital. And then if I ever need something to drive to get like distortion and whatever, then I'll slap on either a Kramer tape or NLS bus, something like that. Or even just a good, like a API compressor or something that'll add something to it. But yeah, let's... uh. Let's enable all of these. 